Hey everyone, how's it going? This is the Bald Metal Nerd coming at you with another video. And in this one, I'm going to talk about bands that switched vocalists around, uh, how that impacted the band, uh, yada, yada, yada. So uh, I'm going to start off by showing uh, some artists that I think it had a positive impact on their career. And uh, the first. Uh, album I'm going to show off is, of course, uh, Anthrax is Spreading the Disease, which, as we all know, is the first one with uh, Joey Belladonna on it. And uh, I think if they had kept Neil Turbin, I don't think Anthrax would have had the career that they had, right? Uh, I think it was absolutely the right move for them to do. <laughs> no doubt about it. That's kind of an easy, gimme type of thing, right? Um, yeah, because Belladonna just took their music to a whole other level. Incredible singer. Totally the right move. Uh, Fistful of Metal is probably no one's favorite Anthrax album. Right? So, yeah, easy choice. Worked out well for Anthrax. Another band uh, that switched vocalists after only one album, but this one's a little more... Um, uh, you know, controversial, well, not controversial, right? Um, I'm going to show uh, my favorite album by this band that I have, and that is, of course, Exodus' is Tempo of the Damned. We all know Bonded by Blood had Paul Bailoff on it, and that is easily one of the most influential and best thrash metal albums ever, right? Period. Landmark album in the genre, great album. Paul does a great job on it. But when you think of Exodus, whose voice, which which vocalist do you think of um, associated with their music? You, of course, think of Steve, right? Uh, at least I know I do. <laughs> you know, um, so... It's interesting to think how it would have their career may have progressed had they kept Paul in the band or Paul stayed in the band or whatever. I don't know. Um, ultimately, I still th I think it was the right move because I think Steve sounds great with the band, even though they did have a spectacular first album with Paul. So um, yeah, let me know down in the comments below which uh, of those singers you like better. Personally, I'm a Steve guy, but you know. Maybe you're Gary Dukes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the next band uh, that switched vocalists around and um, I think worked out well is Crozier to Conformity. Uh, they had had, like, uh, you know, a couple of vocalists up to this point, and Pepper Keenan played guitar on this, and he did lead vocals on one song on this, which, of course, was a... Uh, Harbinger of Things to Come on this album. And all of my favorite Corrosion of Conformity albums have Pepper on vocals. Uh, because honestly, I think that is... when That style of metal that they play with Pepper on vocals sounds the best. It just does, period. My opinion... Not everyone might share that one, but I think it is absolutely phenomenal what he does with the band. So I think, of course, Pepper left the band. Now Pepper's back with them. Regardless, I think that took them to a new level musically as well. So worked out well for them. Next one I'm showing off is... Um, a band that's had several different vocalists, uh, and they didn't get their best vocalist, in my opinion, until their th third album. And I'm talking about Iced Earth and Matt Barlow. And Matt Barlow has been out of the band for quite a while now, right? Um, but again, it's the same thing. All of my favorite Iced Earth albums have Mar Matt Barlow singing on them, right? He's, a he's got a phenomenal voice, fits Iced Earth's uh, style really well. Now, I really do like Stu Block as well. Stu is awesome, 
right? But Matt's fits the band better, I think. Just just my view. In fact, he does he does it so well. Um, here's Days of Purgatory, which is a compilation of Matt singing older Iced Earth songs from the first two albums when he wasn't with the band, and this sounds better than the original albums, in my view. So, there's that, right? Now, uh, we're going to get into the two most famous examples of a replacement singer working out exceptionally well. Um... And uh, the first one I'm going to show off is one of my favorite singers in metal. Um, and it's really interesting to think how their career would have progressed had they kept their original singer because they still would have had, I think, a pretty good career even with their original singer, but I think it would have taken an entirely different turn. And, of course, talking about Iron Maiden, you know, Switching from uh, Paul Diano over to Bruce Dickinson, right? Um, if Paul had stayed with the band, I think Iron Maiden still would have been huge, uh, no doubt. Um, but their work would have been completely different. It would have had an entirely different tone. It would have had a. It would not sound the way that you know we think of Iron Maiden, right? It just wouldn't have happened without Bruce. So. It worked out incredibly well for Maiden, but it is interesting to think of that alternate history. What if Paul had stayed in the band? What would we have today? Like, hell, what would have happened to metal altogether, you know, if if he had stayed in there, right? Like, I don't know. Interesting to think about. And then, of course, this is a really easy one that I'm going to show off. And, um, you know... If this guy had not joined the band, and this band had not changed, they'd be completely forgotten. Of course, Pantera, right? I don't have power metal, but, you know, um, if Phil hadn't joined the band and Pantera did what they did after that, I wouldn't be talking about Pantera because I wouldn't know who the hell they were, right? So, obviously, this is the most, probably the most important vocalist change maybe ever in metal, right? So there you have that. Okay, uh, now we're going to get into some ones that I think uh, were successful in one way or another, even if their careers of these bands um, weren't hinging on it, right? So the first one I'm going to show is Anthrax again. Here is the final album from when Joey left the band. Persistence of Time. And eh, probably my favorite John Bush album, Sound of White Noise, right? Obviously, when John came into the band, Anthrax, their sound completely changed. Um, totally different feel. Very interesting take on Anthrax. Um, I personally really like the John Bush years. Um, I think a lot of good albums came out of that. Um, some, but also probably some of my second least favorite albums came in that era too, right? So uh, it was a bit of a mixed bag, but I think largely successful because I think there was definitely some really great stuff to come out of it. So I would still call it a success, and I'm glad that it happened. So there you go. There's that. Um... Next band I'm going to show off, they've had, I don't know how many different singers, and it hasn't really seemed to affect them too much, but of course they're more of a niche band, they're not, you know, nearly as famous as these other bands I showed off. This was in my top 50, and of course I'm talking about Pyramids, they've had like, I don't know, four or five singers at this point, I'm not entirely even sure how many they've had, right? Um, but all of the singers they get are always fantastic, and they sound great. So... I don't think it's negatively impacted them having that many vocalists. Most bands that have been through that many, it's kind of like, eh, you know, lost their identity a little bit. But, but these guys, I don't think it's hurt them. 
In fact, I love their music, and if they keep switching guys out, whatever. Doesn't really bother me because their music is fantastic. And now we're going to show, of course, a few that might people might consider questionable transitions, right? And once I show one, I got two of these, and once I show one, you're instantly going to know what the other one is. So just for shits and giggles, we'll we'll show Iron Maiden again, right? Uh, going from uh, you know Bruce to um, Blaze, and of course they had to because Bruce quit the band. And um, what's interesting was the approach that Maiden took with this, right? They didn't want someone who sounded just like Bruce. They wanted somebody who was markedly different from Bruce. And they got it. Blaze is a very different type of singer than Bruce. I think he's I think he's really good. I think he has a good voice, and I think he suits those songs well. But obviously, their career took a major nosedive when he joined it. But I don't blame Blaze for that. It's just kind of the way it worked out. And, of course, they had one good album, one bad album. And then Bruce rejoined and all was right with the world again. Of course, very similar story here. Painkiller and uh, Jugulator. You know, Rob and Ripper, right? Same, pretty much the same story. Rob quit. They had to get somebody. Uh, they had a much longer gap in between albums than Iron Maiden did. <laughs> you know. Um, and, uh, you know, same thing. One good album, one not so good album. <laughs> so definitely a mixed bag. Their career took a nosedive. And eventually Rob rejoined and almost right with the world again. <laughs> So, um, yeah, definitely mixed bag results. Now I'm going to show uh, two artists that they changed vocalists. Well, because they had to because their vocalist died, right? And um, what are you going to do when that happens? So, uh, first of all, I'm going to show off is uh, ACDC. And we got the final uh, Bon Scott album here. I went to hell. Awesome. And then they were lucky enough to get Brian Johnson in the band, Back in Black. It's Yes, it's terrible what happened with Bon. It's terrible that he died. But honestly, listening to Back in Black, it's like they didn't even miss a beat. They just were like, you know. Um, musically, right? These are my two favorite ACDC albums, by the way. <laughs> You know, um, so, I don't know. <laughs> yes, it was a blow when they lost Bond, but they really just kept on trucking and had a tremendous career with Brian. So, I don't really know what to say that. Let's not even talk about their brief time with Axl Rose. But <laughs> uh, God, is ACDC even still around? I'm not sure. If they are still around, they need to they need to stop. But that's, that's another video. <laughs> anyway, um, so of course, one more band to talk about, and that is Alice in Chains, their final studio release with Lane Staley before he died, <clears throat> and of course, uh, their first one with William Duvall on vocals. Now, I say that lightly because William Duvall mostly seems to provide backup vocals on their newer albums, right? Uh, it's mostly Jerry is does the uh, lead vocals on these, which is kind of a shame because William Duvall, um, honestly, in my opinion, has a tremendously great singing voice. Um, if you've watched any live footage of... Uh, William singing the older Lane Staley songs. He sounds eerily like Lane when he sings them. William does a fantastic job banging those out. Um, I really wish that they would let him do lead vocals on more of the songs and, and put him more front and center on the albums. That's one of the things that kind of bugs me about newer Alice in Chains, really, is the fact that they kind of Hold William back vocally on the albums, and um, I don't know. I think he's absolutely great, and I would love to hear the spotlight more on him. So, um, as far as bands changing vocalists, there you go. Um, 
it's a mixed bag when it happens. Uh, sometimes they can recover and have a good career. Sometimes it ends careers. Sometimes, you know, all sorts of things happen. And why am I talking about that? Well, because I think, you know, when you listen to a band, what's the number one thing you tend to recognize about the band? You tend to recognize the singer with the band. Of course, the band that has had the most non-success after a uh, great vocal leaving, of course, is uh, Skid Row, right? Uh, without Sebastian Bach, Skid Row is absolute trash, in, in my opinion. Um, they not produced any music worth a damn in, you know, an extremely long time at this point. You, you know, 20-some-odd years they've been uh, on the uh, in, in the shitter. So, um, yeah, for, for a band like that, uh, you know, you're losing your iconic vocalist can definitely end your career more or less. So anyway, of course, as always, let me know what you think in the comments below about this. Um, that's pretty much it. As always, live long and prosper. Keep on rocking.